Oh, pretty good. Okay, here we have <clears throat> a story, interesting story, Sephardic story. Uh, there's books of the Sephardim, you have these beautiful stories that they tell. <clears throat> so here's the story. <clears throat> the story is like this. There was in a town in Baghdad, say Baghdad, and I don't think it says, or maybe it was in, in, in Turkey. In any case, let's say for our purposes, it's Baghdad. And so the king had a, um, a Jewish advisor that he really liked, Rabbi Avraham. But he also had a Jew that he really liked. One minute, one minute. A non-Jewish advisor that he really liked. There we go. And his name was Abdul Dieno. That was his name. That's what it says in the, in the Abdul Dieno. So this Abdul Dieno, he hated the Jew, hated him. But the king liked the Jew because the Jew was honest and the Jew was helpful and the Jew gave good advice. And this Abdul Dienu, he had to praise this Jew all the time. He couldn't say anything bad about him because the king liked him, the sultan. <clears throat> so he planned, he planned, somehow or other, he's going to get this Jew. He comes up with this idea. And he, he takes it, goes and finds a thief or one of his friends, whatever, his, his, his servants. In any case, he says to him, listen, you get into the, here's a key. I have a key to the sultan's private room. Okay, you take this key. When the sultan is not there, right, there's a certain hours of the day he's not there. And you go into the sultan's room and you hide. Hide, I'll tell you where, there's a place, I already made it, that place you hide. In the nighttime, when the sultan goes to sleep, as he puts his turban <clears throat> on this special box, you wake up, take the diamond out of the turban, and here's a false diamond. Stick that in there instead. I had a false diamond made. This is okay. So his servant does it, and it works. In the daytime, he goes into the room, sneaks into the room, hides there. When the sultan goes to sleep, takes off his turban, he, when the sultan is sound asleep, he takes out the, the, the gem from the turban, puts this gem in its place, goes back and hides. And then in the morning, the, 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 the sultan goes about his business. And this Dienu guy, he goes and knocks on the door, tells him it's okay. And he comes out and he's, that's it. It, it worked. So the sultan goes about his business, has no idea anything happened. Uh, the next day, this Abdul Dienu comes in and says, um, "Your Majesty, is, is is something seems to be wrong with the with the with the crown, the, the gem on your crown." I, said, I don't know what's wrong. What could what could be wrong? He says, "Let me just one second. Let me have a look over here." I said, "Your Majesty, I think that uh, between me and you, somebody stole your the diamond. It's not a real diamond." King said, Oh, that's ridiculous. How could it possibly be? <clears throat> How could it possibly be? The king calls his gem master or whatever it is that it is, and he has a look at it and says, Your Majesty, this is glass. It's false. <clears throat> so the king says, Listen, don't tell anybody about this. If people know that I'm so, <clears throat> that I'm so, uh, this, uh, the, the, the helpless, somebody can come in, steal the, the crown, jewel. Wait, oh, yeah, wait. <clears throat> going to be, we have to find who stole the jewel. We have to find who stole it. So how are we going to do that though, without advertising? So this Dienu says, let me think. Let me think. I got it, Your Majesty. I have it. The Jews, <clears throat> they they work in gems. They work in gems. I know. I know the Jews. The Jews that are helpful people, like Rabbi Abraham, Abraham, helpful people, wonderful people, but they're also crazy about money. They're crazy about money. They'll do anything for money. <clears throat> you tell the Jews that they have to bring the diamond back. <clears throat> and if you, but 
but they won't do it unless you threaten them. So you have to tell the Jews that if they don't bring the diamond back, <clears throat> they don't discover where the diamond is, because whoever stole it for sure is one going to sell it. Find out it is, then they're going to you're going to evict them all, evict them all from Baghdad. They're not going to be able to stay in the country anymore. And the country and we'll make an edict. And we'll just we don't have to tell everybody. You don't have to put it in the streets. You just call your Rabbi Abraham and tell him. So the king calls Rabbi Abraham, tells him the whole story, and he says, "You Jews have to find the gem. You are experts at gems." <clears throat> you know the gem. If anybody can find it, it's you. And if you don't find it, then the punishment is you're going to be evicted. Abraham said, "But, but, but, but your Majesty, I mean, we, we didn't steal it, you know. Listen, you can't know. You don't know. Anyways, your Majesty, I mean, we'll do it without the decree. You don't have to. That's that's, that's the decree. That's the decree. Take it or leave it. You want to leave now? You can leave now. You find the diamond, or you're finished." So he goes back and he tells the people, and there's a great wailing and they're crying. And they have to find the diamond. He tells all the gem ones who work with gems, we got to find the diamond of the king. <clears throat> and meanwhile, of course, this Abdul Dienu, he's got the diamond in his room. In his room, he put it somewhere, hid it somewhere, whatever. It, <clears throat> it happens to be that this whole business happened just a week and a half before Passover. And the Jewish people are going every day and they're praying in the synagogue and fasting and nothing is happening. No one has any idea where the diamond is, where the jewel is. <clears throat> so Rabbi Avram says to the Jews, listen, <clears throat> we have to prepare for Passover. We have to remember that we're God's people. And God took us out of Egypt. And God does things. God's involved in the world. We pray enough. Everyone go home, prepare for Passover. And with God's help, that which we do Passover with happiness and joy, the happiness will, this, will change the decree. Simple Paretzis Yedr. Happiness will change the decree. Everyone go home and prepare. Okay, meanwhile, the king is pacing back and forth. He really likes this Rabbi Avram. And he likes the Jews also. The Jews never make him any trouble. Minimal crime comes from the Jews. <clears throat> People say bad things about them, but the king looks and sees for himself. He doesn't. He can't see anything bad about the Jews. All these things that these are false. <clears throat> and he really likes them. Now he's got this decree, and he's going to have to kick them out. But on the other hand, maybe they did steal his crown, his crown jewel. You know, he's all he's all confused. He doesn't know what to do. Poor king. The king is pacing back and forth in his room, and every night he almost can't sleep. He doesn't want to evict the Jews, but he's going to have to do it. So finally, one night, he says, listen, I'm going to go to the Jewish quarter. Tomorrow is the day that they have to produce this diamond. I'll go there to the Jewish quarter to see what's happening. I can't sleep anyway. So he puts on regular clothes, and he has a special escape route that he takes, and he finds himself near the Jewish quarter, and he walks, and he sees all the houses are all lit up. All the houses are lit up and people are all, and he, he looks in the windows and he sees the people are sitting there like angels and they're happy and they're there. This night of Passover. The whole families are there and everybody's dressed in white. And there's, he says, I've listened to the calls. And why could they be so happy? I mean, tomorrow they're going to be driven out of the country. <clears throat> it must be that they found either the diamond or who stole the diamond. That's it. So he puts his ear up to the window. He sees they're all singing. And here's the whole singing. There's a song that they sang in the end of the Passover night. It's from the, the, the prayers. It says that if God would not have taken us out of, if God had taken us out of Egypt and not brought us into the, the whatever, taken the Mount Sinai and not give the Torah, Dayenu, it would have been enough. If God just would have stopped the, the slavery, it would have been enough. Dayenu, Dayenu. The song goes, Dai, Dayenu, Dai, Dayenu, Dai, Dayenu. So he's listening, and he's hearing all the Jews saying, Dai, Dayenu, Dai, He says, Dayenu. It's Dayenu. It's, it's my advisor. He's the one that did it. Ah, now I, want, now I understand why he, why he wanted to kick out the Jews. Now I get it. Dayenu. 
It was him all, the, all along. So he goes back to the palace and he commands his secret uh, servicemen to break into Diana's house in the middle of the night and to see if he's really got the this. And sure enough, they break in and they find the, the, the diamond. And they find that he was the one that stole the diamond. <clears throat> and the Jews were freed. And Dianus was put into prison or something. He got what, his, what, he, what he deserved. And so we see that the happiness of the Jewish people and the not worrying brought about in an, a strange way that they revealed who the thief was and they escaped the terrible decree hanging over their heads. And so it will be to us. If we Jewish people just do what Jewish people are supposed to do and we act in a way that's going to benefit all mankind, we do the commandments and we tell the non-Jews about the seven Noahide commandments, which are basically just to live a healthy, good life with the Creator huh? all the time, as that then God will save us and we'll be able to say, Dayenu, it will be enough for us if God just helps all the Jews, helps the world, saves us from our enemies, and takes the whole world out of Egypt now. Have a good day with Mashiach now. Tomorrow there will be a class. Yes, positive, there will be a class at 8.15 in the morning. See you all then. Shalom Ubracha.